We really should start thinking about public policy with the level of seriousness that we apply to medical science. Medical science has been using randomised control trials and other types of evaluative techniques for donkey's years, and we should really be treating the way that we spend billions of dollars each year in the same respect. Why do we think that job, pro job programs or education or health sector programs are any less important to know what works? The way I think we can take advantage of behavioural insights in policy making is really just by thinking a bit more laterally. Every time you design or deliver a public policy, you have opportunities to make decisions. So why not make those decisions on the basis of things that we know run with the grain of human behaviour? So there's an increasing amount of literature out there that tells us about how human psychology can be applied to public policy. We in the Behavioural Insights team have tried to bring some of that to light in some of our policy papers for policy makers, including East and Mindspace. But we're not the only ones doing that. So when you have an opportunity to design a public policy, have a think, stop and have a think. Is there something I could be doing differently here that would utilise behavioural science? So Latin America is doing a great job of taking on the behavioural science world and using it um, in policy making. One such example is work we did with the Guatemalan Tax Authority. There we were looking to help people to pay their tax on time and we took some of the same things that we tried and tested in the UK to see whether or not they would work in a very different context like Guatemala. So we changed very small things about the letter that the tax authority was sending out to non-payers. We tested a couple of different types of messages. Did it help to say that 65% of people pay their tax on time? Did it help to simplify the letter? We found that in fact simplification works as does highlighting the social norm of paying your tax on time. So that's just one small example of one country using behavioural science in the way they design and deliver public policy. But we know that this is growing and growing quickly, including through the work of CAF. What would be my advice for behavioural, um, using behavioural science in, in the work for policymakers? It's a tough one. I think you have to be pretty strategic about where you start. Start with things that you know people want to know the answer to. It's difficult to get um, evaluations up if you're running up against people who have very strong vested interests in a particular program, working or not working. So start strategically. Start on things that people can do and, and are cheap and easy to do. Changing letters, changing emails is a good place to start. But very quickly you'll find that as you develop insights into what works and you can prove to decision makers that there are cheap and easy ways of making public policy much more effective, they'll allow you and give you the scope to work on the really core issues like how do we get people to um, save for the future, how do we design health programs that minimise diabetes and how do we get people to turn up and stay in school.